Look with mercy on your family of faith who are gathered here and across the world, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given over into the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the 52nd and 53rd chapters of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As for many were astonished at you. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed? what he has heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and for, as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, Although he had, no, he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief, but when, when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Let us read Psalm 22 responsively. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our father, forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you who are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open, their wide, open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. 
My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, nor does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall bow down before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The second reading is from Hebrews, the fourth and fifth chapters. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who, be, who obey him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins in your own body on the cross so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you, now in the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father, now and in the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We come today at this Good Friday as we observe and remember our Jesus' journey to the cross. We remember every step he took, every bit of suffering that he took for you and me. We remember each of the scourges that he took on his back. This wasn't a simple whip that left a stripe that hurts like the Dickens. This was a scourging whipping. This was where there was leather and cloth with bones and metal that went across and every one, 39 of those, it would go grip and tear off, exposing his bone and tearing away his flesh. 
He did this for you and me. He suffered this pain for you and me. He suffered the mocking and all that was there. He suffered the carrying of his cross and the falling. He suffered the nailing to the cross. He suffered all of this for you and me. He did this so that we could be restored and not just so that he would appear to be human. No, this was human. He was man. He walked as a man. He felt pain just like we feel pain. He felt every bit of it. And he took it for our sin. He took it for our shame. He took it for our brokenness. He took it that we could be restored to him. He did it so that we could come and be with him. That we would be glorified in him. Because he knew that he would die. The pain would go away. He knew the suffering in this world was temporary. He knew he would be glorified at the right hand of the Father. But he did this so that we could also be glorified. He didn't need to enter creation in order, for, uh, in order to say, yes, I want to make friends. He entered creation so that... He could show us the love of God, the love of the Father. He could show us where it is that God desires for us to be and who it is that God desires for us to be. He desired all of us to know him to the fullness and to the extent of who we are, to be able to move forward unafraid, knowing that we belong to him. He wanted us to know his life and his salvation. The sacrifices that we were making before were not doing it because our hearts were not with God. You see, he didn't do this so we would feel good about ourselves and say, well, hey, I'm a pretty good person. No, he did this because we had so much sin on ourselves that the normal sacrifices wouldn't do the trick. There's not enough animals that we could sacrifice to be able to restore us and make us right with God because our hearts are so turned away, turned inwardly in on ourselves that we don't even know what right is. gave us the word. He gave us his promises. He came as a high priest once for all that his sacrifice would be one that would last forever. There would be no need to sacrifice anything more because his blood covers all our sin. His blood covers all our shame. The sinless one died on the cross for us. The spikes, as they entered his flesh, he felt every bit of that. As the blood was oozing down his back and the sweat was pouring into the wounds and the salt was burning into those wounds, he took it all. And he didn't do it with anger. He did it with love. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. Forgive us of all our shortcomings, all our failings, all that we do. that don't honor him. Whatever we do that does not honor our Lord, our God, we are forgiven when we realize it and turn to him and accept the fullness of his forgiveness and the fullness of his love. His glory is eternal. His glory is wonderful. His glory is great. His glory is grand. His glory is good. It is ever standing. It never fails. It never falls short. It is fulfilling. It does all that it needs to do because that is who God is. come to the cross not to admire its beauty but to see the roughness of that wood the blood stains and the holes that are left 
from where the spikes were driven in. You smell death and the blood, the thickness of the blood. You hear the cries of our Lord. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? hear those words, it is finished, as he breathes his last. We go to his tomb, sealed and shut up, with the knowledge that this is not the end. We go to the cross knowing that we are forgiven. And it's Friday. But Sunday is coming. And the tomb that is now full will be empty. May the peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Story of the Passion from the Gospel of St. John, Lesson 1, John 18, 1 through 14. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who had betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword in its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews or of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Lesson 2, John 18, 15 through 27. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl, who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, you also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. 
When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Third lesson, John 18, 28 through 40. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born. And for this purpose I have come into the world. To bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Fourth lesson, John 19, 1 through 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take them him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. 
From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over and to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to a place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Lesson 5, John 19, 20 through 27. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, King of the, King of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. Lesson 6, John 19, 28 through 34. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. Lesson 7, John 19, 35-42. He who saw it is born witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they, lead, they laid Jesus there. 